Oh. Paranormal evidence. Tonight, see what truly exists inside the world of the paranormal. Inside. Inside. Join the discussion and review some of the best paranormal evidence captures from a wide variety of experienced and -and up-and-coming investigators. See and hear what they capture, where they captured it, and how they captured it. Right Right now now on Entity Voices. Paranormal Evidence. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Entity Voices Paranormal Evidence. That little quick clip you saw of Chris was him getting pissed off at Facebook. (laughs) It it kicked us off of Entity Voices and off of Tony again, right in the middle of the broadcast starting, which totally, and it all pops up right here in front where I'm trying to control everything, and I can't get it out of the way. Bless you. Thank you. Sorry, guys, for that little... Woo. <laughs> There's Ert. I'm going to go like this because yes, <laughs> so we don't get booted yes. from whatever platform we ended up on. So Ronald from ERRT told me today that that ERRT that we all say Ert because we don't know what it means. It's Epic Reality Radio Tour. Ah. Basically meaning he could do shows or interviews from anywhere. That's where it comes from. Makes sure. sense. So now we know. Now, yeah. Awesome. Excuse me on it. It's still Earth. information. It's still Earth. Yeah. It is too much. <laughs> As you can see from tonight, when Facebook screws up in front of me, Chris can't even get the intro going. So, mm-hmm. sorry, Ronald. <laughs> no disrespect, but you're Earth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was fun. Hope everybody had a good Easter. Yeah, it's nice. And. Uh, <laughs> Practice, practice your faith in any way that you choose, because that's how things happen. That's right. Yeah. Absolutely. Tony and Cherie have been moving. Cherie's not here tonight because she's finishing. She's taking still, back. Still weeks. Moving. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be weeks yet. I mean, we have to clean that whole other house and from top to bottom, and we're just trying to get stuff out of it. Then we had to move the. We put like fill the storage facility then we had to move because they gave us the wrong one <laughs> uh, it's been crazy yeah that's no, nuts you moved into a storage unit and then they said oh this is not the one you're supposed to be in you had to take it out and move from one unit to another unit yep or get charged two and a half times the amount of the hundred we were supposed to get it was like 250 and we're like wait we, we took one for a hundred he goes what <laughs> Because I need you to move the stuff. Uh, In the middle of us trying to move the stuff we had left. It's just. Mm. Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. Oh, it's a good thing that somebody was held responsible for their mistake, even if it wasn't them. Hmm. Right. Right. Then, like, grab your gloves, buckle, you're coming with me. Yeah. yeah. So just slide it over to the one you wanted in, and we'll be good. <laughs> right. Right. That's no, no fun. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's right, Jenny. That's right. <laughs> yes, agreed, hundred yep. percent. No, where's your coordinated poltergeist activity when you need it? That's right. That's right. <laughs> exactly, Roger. <laughs> Run and Lotus, you guys do anything exciting? This uh, weekend we kind of did. We went out for dinner for Friday was my birthday. Yep. Nice. And thank you everybody for the for the kind words and birthday wishes. Um. Most certainly those present here, which was very nice, what you guys all had to say. Um, love you. So I love you guys very much, and that was very, very cool. I made my day. So and then the, the, the next day, or, or I posted something, which I got, got a really big response, but it wasn't for a response. It was just in in the face of all the negativity and you know people calling out people and all the feuding and silly stuff. It's just... I don't know. You see so many people on their birthday, they're raising money for a charity. I mean, how about if we start being charitable to each other? How about yeah, if we start, em- 
embracing the community that, that we're in. And I see still people announcing stuff that they're leaving the field and whatever. And, you know, it is, it is what it is. I guess growth has pains, right? Mm -hmm. So, but anyway, that was, I don't post long emotional posts 99% of the year, nor do I get involved in that kind of commentary, but I felt like there was an opportunity to organically just kind of throw something out there that would hopefully like we do with the work we do, inspire some thought. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, no, it was good. It was a good post. That was all I was trying to do. So that was our Friday was dinner with my son, us two, my father and his girlfriend. And then Saturday we went to Anthony Simonelli's uh, second oldest son, Jesse and his wife are having a baby. They had a reveal party. It's a boy. Yeah, um, boy. I saw that. Which, hey, congratulations. Oh, so Mr. Forget About It's going to be a grandfather. It's going to be a little boy. And then that night we did something we hadn't done in a long time. We had uh, no paranormal stuff planned. We were out of their party fairly early, and we um, we revisited the piano bar we used to go to monthly pre-COVID. Pre-COVID, we used to go monthly, and then we went a couple times after that. But we've been so busy since everything opened back up over the last couple of years now, we haven't had a chance to go anymore. And three or four of our friends who work there and sing there were working. I called ahead. I went. We should go. So it was really nice to kind of reconnect with them. They're like, oh, my God, where have you been? Yeah. And they sound as amazing as ever. Um, it's as good as anything on Broadway, what they do. That's so cool. That's awesome. Yeah. That was nice. Right. So and then yesterday, nothing. We just yeah. kind of we just chilled, regrouped. So jealous. <laughs> uh, Imagine. We did pretty similar. We did a bunch of errands on Saturday, so on Easter Sunday we could just chill and spend time together and chill. I chilled. Well, I no, I worked <laughs> out. She cooked. <laughs> and just so everybody knows, that's her standard, not mine. I've told her numerous times. It's just the two of us. Don't worry about it. Order PF Changs or something. No. We'll be good. But no, Andra still had to cook. <laughs> I'm thankful for it. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. It's not a requirement of the position. No, it's not. Thank God. Yes, Gio. Yes, it was fun. It was fun. Sorry to deflate everybody's paranormal balloon tonight, but we didn't do anything paranormal this week. <laughs> <laughs> this weekend. Yeah. <clears throat> Not, nor did we. We do have something super exciting planning for you guys tonight. Planning? I did that did on we? purpose. Okay. I did that on purpose. <laughs> I was checking. I did that on purpose. <laughs> it's coffee. Okay. <laughs> uh, so we have got this really awesome couple of guests coming on tonight that... We cannot tell you how phenomenal these two people are. It, they're yeah. just completely amazing. Some of the greatest people we've ever met. Some of the greatest paranormal investigators slash researchers in the community. Innovators. Innovators. Anything else? They're the best. Okay. They're the best. <laughs> oh. let, me, let me bring them in and introduce you to Ron and Loris. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Very Thank kind. Thank you. This is like a flashback moment because for people who, yeah. who, may, who may not know, um, we haven't always been co-hosts of this fine show. We were first guests just like this, and then we filled in for Chris and Audra, which were some big shoes to fill. And then when they got back from moving to North Carolina and they were able to do the show again, we were kindly invited to join permanently, which has been awesome for us ever since. But... This kind of is like, right? It's kind of like the beginning, yeah. Like here we are, and we're the guests, which is uh, means this show is going downhill. <laughs> it is going downhill fast. Yeah. <laughs> Can't wait to make that. No, no. <laughs> They're much taller than you think. <laughs> so some of you know all six of us. Some of you don't know all six of us. Some of you don't know even who the hell we are. <laughs> So this week, next week, and the following week, we are going to introduce you to us. So you know, reintroduce, reintroduce you to us, <laughs> introduce people. you to us. Some of you are going to say, Jesus Christ, do I have to hear this again? 
But the reason we're doing this is to let everybody know, we want you to know where we came from, what got us into the paranormal and show you some of our evidence that we've collected over the years. So, you know, we don't just come on here and talk a bunch of shit. We've actually gotten into the field. We're all still out in the field as much as possible. And we want to make sure that everybody, including new viewers, old viewers, get to see that and remind, remind them who we are and how we got here. So. Yeah, and we've, we've had a lot of new viewers join in the last eight months to a year that the whole idea behind it was we've never really gone back and covered this. So I'm sure there's a lot of people in the audience. Um, you know, they may not be the people who typically um, comment, but they may just watch, um, may not know the background history. And it's extensive. I think we have something like 58 years combined or maybe even more. I don't remember what the number was, but it's it's impressive is from from. No, it's probably even more than that. Yeah, it's um, more than that. yeah. Maybe it was closer to 75. I don't remember, but it's a lot of years for six people. <laughs> yep. So with that being said, Mr. Ron, Miss Lourdes, the floor is yours. Give us who you are, where you came from, how mm -hmm. you got to here, and then we'll show some of the evidence clips that you guys sent. Sure. I'm Ron. Um, moments <laughs> ago, I came from the couch. It's right over there. <laughs> <laughs> no? Oh, that's not what you meant? Yeah. <laughs> well, um, the paranormal has always been in my life. My family practices spiritismo, which is a form of mediumship in the Caribbean. But I saw something that terrified me, so I shied away from it for a really long time. And then I met Ron, who got me back into it. And I fell in love with EVP. And then uh, I loved the spirit boxes and the ghost boxes. And then we started working with white noise. And from there, you guys know, it became Staticom once Tony and Cherie came on. And that's pretty much it for me. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Show it over. <laughs> <laughs> That's enough. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> no, it's cool because I did. I did get her into it. My favorite, and you'll hear this on the uh, subsequent episode. My favorite getting into the field thing is is Tony's going on his first paranormal investigation on Valentine's. It's the best. My favorite getting dragged into the field story. Um, <laughs> but he'll tell that on his episode. Um, that's I that's will. The spoilers you're getting from me. And I'll show you some clips from 14 years ago. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's cool. Oh, no, they're funny because we didn't know what the hell we were doing. Yeah, yeah that takes time to shake off, too. Um, so, obviously, yes, I'm Ron. And I've always been into this stuff also. Um, I Like some people, I don't know that I had experience explicitly when I was younger. But then now that I, you know, from learning and educating myself on how this stuff kind of happens, there were a couple of things. I think in the second, my second book, I wrote about a story called The Phantom Drummer, where I think um, my father had a soundproof room in the basement. He still has with a, a second drum set and he would take another one out in the road when he would play a gig. He was out on a gig. My mother was on the middle floor and my sister and I were upstairs in our bedrooms. and I heard the drums playing and I know it wasn't her. And we were both upstairs. And at the time, I think I kind of just try to distance myself from the fact that I was hearing that as much as possible, went under the sheets and hoped to go to sleep quickly and not experience it anymore. But I didn't connect the dots. Um, so I, I may have had things that were peppered in, I guess, at that point, but not like somebody who sees a ghost and they're like, whoa, you know, and then that's what starts them off. But I was always fascinated with this stuff from fantasy and sci-fi games and movies and and shows and then i lived in los angeles for 14 years and that was where i first got to start um investigating i used to go to the queen mary monthly which i miss uh and then uh in 2014 moved back to the east coast new jersey and got with a group that is now since disbanded but they were doing a little bit, so I was itching to do more. And then I started, I guess, not freelancing, but just looking for public events I could go do on my own. Then when we started dating, uh, she was interested in it also. So we went on our first mini residential. Somebody had asked me from the gym to come help out with something. And then we started looking for public events, and then we've both been on teams and stuff. And 
after a certain amount of time, we looked at each other and went, because two teams we were on separately <clears throat> didn't work out. And we were like, let's just do us. Let's just be us. Um, and we named it Gognac from the thing she came up with um, as a prefix for an email. But the idea was we were working with different groups and teams and people at different places, and we liked it. And we like them and working with this one group all the time. You didn't always get to do that. And sometimes the group didn't like you working with this person or with that person. And we didn't have any issues with the, this person and that person. We wanted to. So we decided to, um, you know, form a little duo sort of team. And then the whole Gagnac thing was born. And then that's kind of what led us up to now. And then, you know, we both had an interest in audio phenomena, so we dove into I, you know, ITC and EVP pretty much at the same time. I was already interested in ITC before we had met, so that's kind of what I guess. Without going too deep into little side evidence, that's kind of what got us here. So, how many years combined, or how many years separately, have you guys been in the paranormal? Well, I never count. <laughs> I never count my years growing up. I don't know why I don't. Because I guess it, it was just normal for me, right? I yeah. would have dreams and you know have premonitions, and I would see things, or you know. But I guess if I count those years, I don't even know. I'm. I'm I and guess because I've always had it since I could remember and I'm 52 years old. <laughs> so I don't even know how to answer that, to be honest with you, because it's been really all my life. Okay. How long have you been investigating? Well, investigating since 2016. So eight years. Okay. Yeah. And that's, that's yeah. how I gauge it too. I mean, sometimes you have experiences or, or you may have had encounters at certain points in the past, but I think when, and I could be wrong contextually, but I think sometimes or most times when, when someone asks that question, the, the answer they're looking for is how long you've been in the field studying it or experimenting or investigating or poking around to see what's actually happening. So that my answer always comes from that. And for me, it would be probably 12, I'd say 12 years, uh, somewhere around 2011, 2012. Okay, so there's 20 years of paranormal mm -hmm. investigating just in that one square. Mm -hmm. So there you go. <laughs> oh, I we'll add them up through the three episodes. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime math works in our favor. <laughs> <laughs> I've got 20 something years as a court reporter, too, if we can do that. Because... <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Anyway, it works for me. All right. Before we get into the evidence, Anybody got to go to the bathroom? Anybody need <laughs> a snack? You get a couple minute break here. You get a couple minute break here. <laughs> We've got a few commercials for you from UNX, and then we'll, we will be right back. All right, guys. conference enthusiasts we've got another great event for you in 2024 the saucers and aliens kansas ufo day in dimension g is being held in the ufo capital of kansas geneseo on july 6th this is a fun festival in the middle of nowhere there will be a parade decorated yards costumes vendors speakers and a showing of the movie The Day the Earth Stood Still. Appropriately, an eight-foot-tall statue of Gort and a statue of Plateau will be dedicated. 
This will be the only museum in the U.S. with these custom-made statues. If you'd like to donate to the statue project or attend the event, visit GeneseoMuseum.com. That's G-E-N-E-S-E-O Museum.com. Be sure to bring your camera when you attend the event. That's GeneseoMuseum.com. Did you miss us? <laughs> <Where have I? laughs> I like the music better than our opening music, which yeah. sounds like a James Bond film from 78. <laughs> it hits better than that porn one they had there for a couple of weeks. <laughs> well, speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you guys laugh, but I was in here setting up the broadcast one night, and I saw that. I'm like, that's a new one. I started playing it, and Audra from the other room goes, what are you oh, watching? Are you watching? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, with that being said, we've got some evidence to show you. We do, we do. From Gognac. Yeah, we, we tried to, um, I don't know if we were going to say this or not, but I always like giving credit where it's due. This whole idea of introducing us episodes was, I believe, Tony's. Yeah. Um, which I absolutely love, um, and it shows you where he's coming from because the personal element is always something that, that makes the guests, when we have our guests, reasons why people will follow them after they see them on our show if they've not seen them before because they you connect with the people. You haven't even been out in the field with them, but you connect with them. So it is good for us to, to have our audience acclimated with who we are. And in looking at the way this was outlined to do, we thought it was great. And people who know us from Staticom now, or even DRV not too far back, may not have had the opportunity. I don't even know how much of some of this stuff we've even shared before. And if we have, it's been a while. But just to kind of show the progression to where we are now, like the, the you can see the quality difference in what we record, the methodology changes and stuff. Um, I know you guys are all always kind enough to point that out, having known, you know, we put work in and develop when we started DRV and stuff. But it's it's even for us interesting. I think there's one or two clips in there I even put in when we had gotten stuff um, using an app, which is always, for me, kind of a very middle ground, right? Because I don't think there's a magical app out there that does, you know, opening the gateway better than any other. I think it has a lot to do with mental stuff, mixing with mental stuff. And the phone is just modulating the experience. It's just, it has nothing to do with the app necessarily at all. So I and mean, I've seen other people get stuff that had timing irrelevance. It was really hard to ignore and clear. 
So I thought just to show that when we speak to these things, we, we've done it. We're not just, you know, out of prejudice, dismissing the usage of apps. But, you know, we also at the same time, I think, right, try to hold somewhat of a, a realistic uh, impression of, of how not so accepted, you know, it is. It's looked at as more of a toy than a research tool. Yeah. I mean, like when we used to use the apps, I, I like them, but then we got one particular um, oh, yeah. yep. sentence. What was that sentence? Um, I forgot what it was, but oh, it was. Yeah, yeah. It, it was. I forgot what it was, but it was like a four, four led, four word sentence, and we were like, "Oh my god!" I think it was in the Queen Mary. Yep. But then we went somewhere else around here. It was the Shanley or somewhere. I don't remember where it was. No, it was at one of that ha that house, the Miss Fanny's or something in New York. And State. the same four words came out with the same infliction, with the same voice. It was exactly the same. And I, that's when I was like, uh, nope. <laughs> it kind of turned me off. Yeah. And the first time at the Queen Mary, it didn't have timing and relevance to the degree. And maybe this speaks to how we should even be stringent within that. It didn't have. You started it, something like that. It was yeah, something like that. She started, or you started it, or something. Yeah, yeah. She started it didn't have it. timing and relevance that was undeniable. Like, what color is my shirt? And then you know, blue, or your shirt is blue. It wasn't that direct, but it definitely um, had the appearances of answering the question. It was pretty on. Same thing comes out at this other location, and everybody's like, "Whoa, it's clear!" And we, and look, and we look at each other like, like "Uh." -uh. <laughs> That sounds It was familiar. exactly the same, same infliction and everything. It was, I was like, no. Recording. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we were recently at a, at a location, I don't want to say where, and somebody was using one of the apps that has like the AI thing and it draws pictures about something in the environment or whatever. And it drew some picture of me, uh, or not me, of a person, a guy in a hat with a UFO and whatever in the background. And then someone else with a phone in the same room got the exact same thing. It was the exact same picture. Pointing somewhere else too, right? Was it no, it was, it was exactly the same, the same okay. picture. No, but I mean, was she pointing the same direction as you or was she pointing it somewhere else? It might've been the same direction. I don't oh. remember. It was close enough, but. But so, it was um, the same picture. So, I mean, that's, uh, uh, that's uh, enough for me. You know, like it, it can work. You know, apps can, can work, but I think. You have I, to be careful. There's so much uh how would i say this there's so much uncertainty territory between knowing it worked and not knowing it just gave you something between evidence and results it produces right. results are there evidence of something sure evidence of paranormality evidence of programming yeah difficult to tell the only way you can tell is if you built it yourself and you know everything in that word bank or syllable bank or and yeah. every method used to produce it. If not, you have no way of knowing if something comes through, if it wasn't already there, put in that way. Now, if it repeats at another location and you guys can identify that's exact, then you know it's in there. Yeah. Yeah. It was disappointing. Yeah. So I mean that's that's kind of where it sits in our in our ITC ethos of when we speak on this stuff is it's 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 got a lot of uncertainty to it right yes very true less, less accepted so i don't know if, if the the files are all named specifically all right and i'm going to start with shadow figure ah oh, okay this one was easy and this one i actually have because if i'm not mistaken tony made this into a video for me a while back um to show it I mentioned uh, frequenting the Queen Mary quite a bit. So this is before she and I had met. This is October of 2013. And the website had oversold tickets to the event. There were like 40 something people. Went into a big open gallery facing the infamous boiler room number three. Uh, I took a series of pictures. I didn't take three at a time in the same spot because I wasn't really expecting anything. I was just kind of snapping photos around the area. The only person with their back in the direction of the photo was the uh, guide. Everybody else, the other 40-something people, including the security guy who had to let us into that area so no one could have been ahead of the group, were all facing that door to go to the boiler room across the gallery. Nobody saw anything. I didn't see anything. 
until I got home. And then this is a, a like a 40 second, I think, video showing the photo. And I think Tony zoomed in on it. So you could really see it. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. Looks like we can talk through this too. Yeah. Oh, cool. Oh, because it's this, like a photo. Yeah. Get that yeah. funky UNX music right about now. <laughs> <laughs> so there's no handles on those doors on the side facing us. So you see that arm going down and almost if you look closely, like a bony hand. Yeah. There's another robed arm that's pressed up against the door. That's where the bar is to open the door from the other side. So it, the arm is pretty much in line with where the push bar is to open it from inside. Yeah. Those are perimeter lights in the back that go around at least that side of the room. And underneath it, uh, I know I had it back in the day, had someone say, are those white sneakers? I went, who would go to the lengths of having an all black costume? You can't even see their face and put on white sneakers. So it's they soft. can move around quietly. <laughs> they could have <laughs> had black cool. sneakers. <laughs> Could I, have a sneaker I don't think it looks like white sneakers. I think it looks like it's hovering. Yeah, well, those those soft spots are in line with the angle of the lights behind it. So that's a little bit of the diffused light coming through. Yeah, but it's a little bit of a good call. Yep, a little opaque uh, close to the bottom. And it's casting a little bit of forward shadow into the room that we're in. Yeah. But there was absolutely nobody there. If there was anybody standing there in costume or otherwise, I wouldn't have taken a picture and I would have seen it. It's yeah, not that far away. And didn't you say, Ron, that you were led by the person giving the tour? Uh, he unlocked the door, so there couldn't have been yes. anybody in there prior to. And you were first one of the first ones to peek through the door, and you snapped that picture right at that time, correct? Yes, you 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 have. It's all locked down. Security doesn't let you into that part of the ship. You can't get into that part of the ship. So yeah, there was no one ahead of us. And then the, the young lady I was with at the time, we had been on, because I used to go to, like I said, all the time. So the guy, Matthew Schultz from Para Explorer Project out of San Diego, he's like, God, oh, you guys walk ahead. You've heard my spiel before. So we were facing that way, but we were even closer to that door than the rest of the group. <coughs> and then I took those shots. Right. Somebody would have called them out. Yeah, there was, there was, I am, I am beyond confident. It's not. You can question my judgment and, and beliefs and, and what I think I experienced in getting that photo, but I undoubtedly know that I would not have taken a photo if there was a person right. in right. costume standing there. And they never have people running around in shadow figure black costumes. I've never no, seen for Halloween before. No, and, and Audra and I have also been on that tour too. And they, nobody, the, guys, the tour didn't start to like midnight. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it goes till 5 a.m. I mean, there's nobody. I mean, the restaurant upstairs closed. The, I think right. the only thing open at that point is the bar. And that's what, five, six decks up? Right. Yeah. And then, um, and you have to stay. You can't advance forward without the security or the paranormal guy that's in charge of the group. You can't move forward. You can't. Yeah. yeah security. He's in their hand. You can't get through. Security yeah. escorts the tour the whole way through. So even the guide doesn't have the key to do that. Right. True. Yeah. Very true. So there was nobody there. And I didn't know I had that until I got home close to six or so in the morning. And then I looked at the picture and I was just like, it was a little bit unnerving. I'll be honest. Yeah. I was, I was still fairly new and I was not expecting anything like that to ever happen. There Very cool. Shot, though. Very cool capture. So the next clip we have is from the engine rudder room. <laughs> oh, just the, this one's funny. Did you watch these before like you usually do? Yeah. <laughs> so this one was using an app. I think this was using Phasmavox when we were using it. Um, <laughs> I don't know what's programmed into the app. I don't know who programmed the app. But it, this, to me, was just funny. It wasn't answering anything. I don't no, know that it, it has timing it. or relevance. It just said it. And I thought it was funny. I went, well, if we're going to introduce ourselves, we are half clowns. Let's show this. Yeah. And and for anybody that ever wonders if you miss things from life after you pass on, this is evidence right here. That's a good point. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Thank <laughs> you. 
Americans to penis. Oh. <laughs> he said penis. <laughs> I like his line because <laughs> she said penis. <laughs> That's why I put Beavis and Butthead at the end of it. I thought I sounded like that. <laughs> yep. That's awesome. So there are some things that you wish you could take with you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Roger, yeah, it was, was, it was really funny. I was laughing that whole night. Yeah. <laughs> after we heard it on the playback. I was like, what? So I don't know what's in the word bank. I mean, I wonder, right? I wonder. It does seem like a strange word to add to the word bank. Yeah. I know it wasn't repeating anything. It recorded on the microphone with us that night. <laughs> the best part is female voice. Yeah. Yeah. You know. <laughs> well, I thought that would be a fun one to share because I don't think I've ever put that on a show before. No, that's the first time we've yeah, seen that that's one. Funny. That's funny. That's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah. It was, uh, I was laughing for a while that night. That, that oh, would night. definitely start the night off right. Yeah. <laughs> or end the night right, depending yeah. on. Yeah. I can tell you and nothing to do with radio because that part of the ship we used an SB11 down there before, and there was nothing. Right. There's nothing. That's we were in the feel. You're way down in the belly. Yeah, yeah, until you get up to the um, to the basically the control room with the windows. SB7s just die. I mean, there's yeah. no signal penetrating that metal hull. Just doesn't happen. Yeah. So, so that's either an adult-minded host or an adult-minded programmer. <laughs> See what I mean? So for everybody watching, that was a true EVP because it didn't penetrate deep down in the hole. <laughs> yeah. Quadrant space. <laughs> yes, you, ma you married him. <laughs> we love him, but you married him. <laughs> oh, she's got the same sense of humor as me. She just doesn't do it on air like I do. <laughs> yeah, well... We brought it to the table, so I guess that's our fault. Right. <laughs> All right. Next one, helicopter, not a helicopter. <laughs> this is this is cool um, because uh, when we first started with Direct Radio Voice and then shortly after when uh, through influence of Keith Clark, filtering live with the software, uh, we would a lot of times on podcasts not even show the computer. We would show the radio because the source of the white noise is what we believe was – facilitating whatever words we were getting. Then eventually, you know, we started doing it. And then when Tony Cherie were involved with us, they were doing it. And then we showed the computer. And I always had the the concern that people are going to think that the software, like an app or a program, is where there's the word banks or sounds or whatever. Like, that's where it's coming from until we explain it. So this is a great example because this is just the radio. This is the boom box. I may have had a modicum of reverb on it, maybe, but that's it. This is just an empty long wave or short wave. I think it was a long wave channel at that time, 222 kilohertz. And that was it. So this is no software, no live filtration, just white noise in real time. And I thought I heard uh, the, the signal was very choppy. We use this frequency routinely for a while. It was always just, and all of a sudden this one night it was like, I was like, that sounds like a helicopter. And that kind of sets up what we heard. All right, here we go. Helicopter sounds. I wonder if it is like interference from helicopter radios. We are close to New York City. It's 2.40.
<laughs> that was great. So that's that's the foundation for this whole Staticom thing, right? And it was for, it was pretty clear coming out of white noise, no filtration, no cleanup. And I heard it. And I heard it. And we did have some. There's another one in this thing that is to date still one of our clearest communications. And it was just going through a portal box. It had a little reverb, uh, a little noise gate, and just that same boombox radio. Yep. It's another one that you're going to show, I guess, at some point. I'll, I'll know it when I hear and it. And no one was in the room. And no so. one was in the room. Yeah. But that's an example of, so when people see what we do now with Staticom getting the voices, it's the you software the is just making the clarity of the, of, and what we hear easier to pick out. It's not responsible for putting the words there. Right. No. The software right. is, is, is not the end all be all of, of what's happening. It's just making the experience discernible. It's just the filtration. Right. That's, it. that's it. You guys were explaining too that, you know, there was a, a progression of the communication and Ron, I remember you saying that you were reading, both of you were learning about how and information that was given about how they told you it would progress. And I remember yeah. by saying it exactly followed that. First we were hearing what sounded like EVP voices and then it, then it switched to more vocal based and then it would come right up over the static noise, which is what this one sounded like it did. Um, but that's really cool that, you know, the information prior about how it was should start to unfold. You guys experienced every step of that. And that was a great example of when you were getting voice from pure white noise off of a world band radio boombox. Yeah, yeah, no, and that's spot on. You remembered it exactly. It was amazing because we didn't even know that that was the process. Ron read it after it happened, and we were like, oh, shit. That's exactly how it happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was reading it at the same time, but I got to where it was from Dr. Annabelle Cardoso's books. I got to where it explained EVP from audio support. Then you may get some direct voice where you'll hear stuff in the room that's not coming through the radio, which we had briefly, and then boom direct radio voice and they started coming out of speaker. For me personally, it's when we, when we get people's loved ones come through. I love when they come through. Oh, for Don's question? Yeah. It's a great question. Yeah, that's yeah, I love when they come through and then they have that life-changing experience. That really is something that I really, really enjoy. And then I'm, I'm glad that it happens for them. Well, yeah. If we if we get to an opportunity to do an event or be anywhere you're around or close to you, Don, I don't remember exactly where you live. But if that's possible, we'd be more than happy to avail, you know, what we do to you. This, this is, this is what she said is true. We didn't expect to be on that same path of what Marcello Bacci did by giving families or people moments or closure or whatever. But, and we don't guarantee it because we don't know what's going to come through, but it does seem to happen pretty often. And if that's their takeaway and that's our experience, that's good. That's good. Uh, certainly not doing anything for us in the fame and fortune department, but it does give us something very rewarding. You know, you weren't using an inverter. No, there was no inverter. That was literally the helicopter one was literally just the radio. That one didn't even have the the portal with the modicum of reverb. That was just the radio. Yep. So, so that, which is funny because we tell people all the time, you could start right now if you have a shortwave, medium wave radio, and just. Put it on and listen to white noise and record it because that's what we did. Have we now with Tony and Sharif developed this into something more fine tuned? Absolutely. But we started the process like that. And that was one of the reasons I wanted to show that was is not for people to think if you don't have Staticom, you don't have voices. We were getting voices and you're going to see other ones on here that were pretty telling. It's just what we've been able to do through our work. And then even more so when Tony and Sharif got on board was enhance the quality of what comes through in real time. So it looks like Don's in Springfield, Missouri. And yes, right. I'm in Missouri. <laughs> we'll have to figure something out. Uh, I would, yeah, I mean, when somebody, especially if they ask, I'd love to do it. Yeah. And so, Don, if you can make it up to uh, Gettysburg in July, Ron and Lourdes will be running a whole room. So, Staticom will be running pretty much for four days. That's true. Yeah. The Gettysburg Battlefield Bash. Yep, we will be doing it. All right. The next one we got is Harlot. At Kingsland Manor. That's so the one he was talking this about. This is the one. So this was National Ghost Hunting Day. Everybody at Kingsland Manor, which I know Tony and Cherie got to do with us, everybody was upstairs for the end of the night wrap-up, the group that was running it at the time, 
uh, did a whole pre meeting and then post what did you experience kind of get together. So everybody's upstairs. There were cameras running. So the video and audio you see were recorded at the same time. This is not a, a separate audio track put to a picture. So you can see the room's empty. That's pretty much the entire area other than the entrance to the side. And it was just that radio, the boom box. And it was running through the one portal box I have. So it had a little bit of reverb. Can anybody come out there? Yes, to, to, the, to the Gettysburg Battlefield Bash. How much, I forget how much the tickets are. It's very affordable. It yes. goes to Wounded Warriors. So it's a, it's a big charity give. It's for 20 sure. bucks a person at the door and it covers your whole weekend. There you go. So, yeah, we'll have a whole room. And we'll be running closed circuit, closed door, static comm sessions. Every hour on the hour. Every hour. And then we're going to put a lecture somewhere in the middle of the day yeah. where we'll speak on theory and everything behind what we think is going on. So this is Kingsland Manor. Um, people may know it if they watch Psychic Kids. I think the, the new version of the show, they relaunched. I think the second season, they did an episode from there. It's in Nutley, New Jersey. And again, nobody downstairs, National Ghost Hunting Day. I watched the camera from the broadcast. Oh, AJ, absolutely. We'd love to meet you. So I watched the broadcast camera and I heard this earlier that night when we were setting up, it was us two. And I think Paul Dixon was with us also. And a female voice came through like some kind of something. And I was like, <laughs> nobody was recording. How'd that go? <laughs> <laughs> I knew, gonna, I knew he was going to ask me to do it again. He always, he if he was in the chat, he would have asked me to do it again. She was like, <laughs> not humming, but she was doing some kind yeah, of a tune. Like, some kind of, uh, right. See? Yeah, yeah. He does it better. And nobody was recording. So I was like, ah. Yeah. So then later on, I find this, and I was glad because of the video camera was still recording. All right. Here we go. That's awesome. That was cool. No software. That's crazy. Yeah, that computer that was in the bottom of the shot was that was used for the broadcast for National Ghost Hunting Day. So they were running a camera off of it. Yeah. So cool. Cool. So yeah. Timing relevance. Wasn't that Kingsland used as a brothel at one point? In yeah. the basement. Yeah. The basement where, was, where that was set where up. That was, yep. 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 Yes, it was. Sounds like somebody wasn't getting their money's worth. Nope. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we were we were shocked when we heard that. And again, that's free software. That was just just the, the radio on. and had a little reverb to it. Yeah. And the noise floor bottomed out. Right. Yeah. That's away. what I was gonna say is that even without any of the software um, enhancements that we did you notice similar features where, you know, today on Staticom, when the voice speaks, I mean, it's just dead silent. Now, some of that's the, the cutting off of, of frequencies below it, but even on just a straight static station radio, when they speak, you hear that ground floor drop. So yeah. um, really cool. That is way cool. All right, the next one we got, Four Mansion Tour Bring April. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, yeah. Tony was there for this. This was this was still DRV direct radio voice. And April Bousset, the psychic housewife from New Jersey, was with us. 
It's her birthday today. Oh, so yeah. Happy birthday, so happy April. Birthday, April. Yeah. Happy, birthday, April. Happy, birthday, April. happy birthday, April. And somebody there wanted to talk to her in the lower level. <laughs> yep. And actually, Uncle Giuseppe was, was, was from Anthony's team, Seekers Club. Caradonna was with us. And he heard April. I think I heard Basement. We, yeah. we didn't hear the whole message. And then we, we stopped recording immediately. We were the only two in the room on the second floor where the bar area is recording. And then we stopped recording immediately, shut everything down, and played it back. And then we found that. Yeah. And then you came and played it for me. And I'm like, okay. And I was... DRV hooked at that time. So it's <laughs> yeah, that a cool had, response. That had something to do with it. It absolutely did. All right, let's take a listen. Here we go. That was cool. That's amazing. I mean, that was the first that was the first time I heard direct radio voice. And a full sentence like that. Now you can hear how Faticom 2.0 has cleared up the oh, yeah. vocals that come through. And that's like Ron said, that's all the software does is it literally just clears the vocals, but it does not put them there. And Ron made that very clear. Those vocals are there. They're just cleared up with the with the software that you see. It doesn't create them. But I remember you playing that for me and I'm like, what? I mean, five, six word sentence. Don't get that in spirit boxes. And that's why I was like, okay. <laughs> no, I appreciate, I appreciate you saying that. That was one of the reasons we wanted to show some of these clips because I think when, you, when people see Staticom, they don't realize the thing that made us believe that something like Staticom was possible was the fact that we were getting voices with just the white noise. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. And, and that's super important to know because, you know, like you said, a lot of people will think, oh, well, whatever they're running is putting vocal information in and, you know, they're fooling themselves. No, that information does not come from the software that's filtering because that's all it does. Right is filtered. The voices are there and were there even before the software right. was added. Yeah, that, that we wanted to seize the opportunity with this episode to, to do that because I think it's an easy misconception with technology to make is to assume that the software gets all the credit. But in, in actuality, and with Staticom right back to these early DRV clips, the, the white noise has primacy as far as what works in the process. It absolutely does. Agreed. And, just so everybody's aware, no light bulbs were injured in the making of that video. <laughs> That's true. Good to know. Good yeah. Enough. I was a little concerned. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the next one is talking to Austin's spirit. Oh, yeah. So this is cool. So we're allowed to show this one because this one has already been shown on, on Facebook before. Austin Maynard is who it's talking about, who they're talking about. We went out, it's funny because now Staticom, right, 2.0, we went out a year ago, November. So it was actually November 2022. So is it November? Is it October? But October, whatever. Maybe October? I think right. it was in October. But so it's over a year. We went out and did an episode of Death Walker with Nick Groff out at Buell Manor in Ohio. And we were recording. <laughs> we were recording uh, before we started testing it, everything. So the voice was very clearly addressing Austin. Actually, I might've had one other one with him that I could have shown too, that it's not, I'm sure not going to be in the episode, but this one he already shared. So I knew it was safe to use because our episode hasn't even come out yet, but that's what this is from. Yeah, it's kind of funny too. <laughs> it is. 
It is. All right, <laughs> here we go. Who am I? What's my name? Austin's downstairs. <laughs> it was not wrong. <laughs> It was that's not amazing. Yeah, yeah, they pulled them out. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> they weren't lying. <laughs> <laughs> he, he had a he had a vape thing that had yeah. CBD. Yep. <clears throat> like the spirit took one. I know. <laughs> yeah. I'm talking to his spirit. It's not smoking. <laughs> yeah. But that was that was because it was in real time. I said, you know who I am, and they named Austin. And when he's downstairs, and they go get Austin, please. Yep. And he was. Just incredible. Timing and relevance and accuracy. Yeah. And yeah. It's crazy. For the record, <laughs> just vape. <laughs> <laughs> My tolerance, I wouldn't be able to make it through the end. It could have been Ash. <laughs> it could have been a disappointed grandma. <laughs> could have been. I don't, I don't remember the whole history. That manner was really cool. <laughs> I will tell you that since that was the only thing I knew that for sure we could show. Nick Nick Groff got a lot of contact when we did DRB with him. Yeah, like he got a lot. And he like heard a lot. lot. And he was amazing too. I'll tell you, you Tony, you know this the frustration. This and Chris, you, Audrey, you also do too from witnessing when stuff would come through because we weren't running the session questioning. We were downstairs, and Nick was upstairs with the Bluetooth speaker communicating. The second he heard what sounded like a voice come through, even if it didn't pan out, he shut up. He didn't talk over anything. That's awesome. And it was amazing. He had this dance back and forth with the voices that he would he would talk on and on and on. You hear him. That's this long, ongoing, running question. He hears a voice. He, stop. Even if he didn't finish. And he would hear a lot. Like yep. Yeah. It, was, right. it was impressive. Yeah, it was That's good. Awesome. The, skill, the listening skill that he displayed was really impressive. That's good. Very cool. Before we go to the next one, we do have one little quick commercial about somebody you're seeing on your screen right now. If you're in the Arizona area anytime soon, I want you to pay really close attention to this. I know, I know, I know at least two or three of those people. In, in <laughs> One of them looks really familiar. Yeah, yeah he did to me too. I was like, like, Rick McCollum, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's the one. Yeah, Rick McCollum. Yeah. Thank hey, you, Mayor Matt. Though I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, that's it's eleven days away. Um, oh. Great. Come up Saturday, soon. April thirteenth. I think it starts at. Either nine or ten a.m. I can't remember, but y'all, if you want to go to Globe, April's your last chance. <laughs> do yep. not do it in June. Do not do it in July. Nope. Nope. It warms up a bit. <laughs> yeah. Little bit. Little bit. Well, that's cool for people on on the left coast of the country, or anywhere near that, that can make it. That want to also see Staticom run live in person. Yep. I assure you that a demonstration, a lecture, and a presentation by Dos Rathmans yep. will not disappoint. No, it should be. And we've run it there before, not 2.0, though. So this will be great to see what happens. But we've always gotten good stuff because it, the town does have a very haunted history to it. And some great locations there are just fantastic. It is, and it's it's. If I'm not mistaken, Globe's almost older than Phoenix. 
or pretty damn close to it. Um, I guess that depends on historically when it was classified as city. There you but go. I think you might be right. I think Globe might have it beat by <clears throat> by because a it was a mine. mine. Yep. The oldest town actually in Arizona is either Payson or Tucson. I can't remember which, but one of them is. Which compared to anywhere else doesn't say much because we no. were like <laughs> we didn't become a state until you guys were all states for years. <laughs> But Globe's a cool little town. It's yeah. uh, it's it's a Miami. It's called Miami Globe. Yes, there is a Miami, Arizona. It is not like the Miami, <laughs> Florida by any means. Not even close. It's they're they're like right next to each other. They're little mining towns. Felt Dodge still has a still has an active copper mine going there, and zinc mine. I think they still have it going there. It's not an exciting place, but great history and great uh, um, paranormal investigating that happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you happen to be anywhere in the Arizona area during that weekend come on up get your tickets come on up it's gonna be gonna be fun they've got investigations at night you can get tickets for they've got Patty Negra is doing a bunch of seances um, I think there's still some openings uh, to get tickets for that so if you're in the area go check it out uh, it's ghost of globe paracon.com I believe is the URL um, go check it out and that 1910 jail and courthouse has been on ghost adventures. It's been on ghost hunters. It's been on numerous shows. It's, mm -hmm. it's, yep. Yeah. They really haunted. You know what they didn't have on those shows, though? Mm -hmm. Staticons. Rathmans. Rathmans. Staticom, yeah, that's right. They didn't have Rathmans. <laughs> no. Nope. And they didn't have Staticom. But if you come now, you know what you get? Rathmans. 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 Yeah. It's going to be good. And no commercials. No right. commercials. No commercials. <laughs> But if you have a commercial, you know what it has in it? Rathmans. <laughs> tacos? <laughs> oh, tacos? Yes, that's the only thing almost as much I love as Taco much as Tony. Yeah, Taco Tony. Yeah, I love it. I love it. I love it. great place to get those tacos, too. Yeah. <laughs> All right. The next one we got is ITC Session 2 excerpt. Ah, this was just... The radio, I think, with some reverb, I think it was going through the... We would use the portal box as a speaker, and then we would put a little bit of reverb on it. It was one of the many things we tried to do. There you go. Globe, right. 1876. Phoenix, 1867. Oh, so Phoenix yeah. is older. Oh. Phoenix is older. Thank you, Roger. Roger Phoenix is Roger. older or Roger's dyslexic. One of the two. I was... <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Wrath man. <laughs> I don't even know which one you Roger is simultaneously watching Jeopardy while he's watching. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take old hot cities for 300. <laughs> so, so right. this was, this was just a radio. We used a portal box just because it was a good amplifier, a little guitar amp speaker, a little bit of reverb. That was all we were using. And this is another example of no software, no live filtration, no slowing the voices down in real time, which has made a tremendous difference yeah. Yeah. in hearing stuff in real time. And still, this is another example, just to kind of, I really wanted to seize this opportunity to show pre-Staticom, pre-software vocal capture capabilities so that they don't think that just, like I said, the computer is, is what's, you know, the crux of what's happening. It's not. Right. Here we go. Who are we speaking to? Who's asking if we can hear them? Because we can, we can hear you. Give us your name, please. So we can talk.
<laughs> impressive. Very impressive. Yep. That was pretty clear. <clears throat> yeah. It almost sounds like an EVP, right? Because it's like, right. okay. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that again, that was just out of the pure white noise. Just that radio that you saw there. That was it. And the portal box. Yeah. Just had a little reverb on a speaker. That's it. Yep. So, Lourdes, explain to our audience what you meant by it sounds like an EVP. Because it, it sounds whispery, right? It sounds like a, I can't say my name. It, right. it almost sounds like it's not coming from the from the radio, actually. Mm -hmm. So, who knows? Maybe it is an EVP. I'm not sure. But but that's what happened <laughs> when we were doing it. I mean, we, we're assuming it's coming from the from the radio. But What's your noise for it did drop? Again, you can hear yeah. it up in the radio prior to the voice coming through, it's like a second before it, it drops, and then that voice comes through. So I think it did, but yeah. you're absolutely correct. It has got all the characteristics of a straight record and review EVP on a digital recorder, that whispery sort mm -hmm. of, again, if I recall, isn't that how you read it unfolded for others? That's right. EVPs showed up first, right? And then more full sure. vocal voices. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then the radio voices. But you're right, because the the noise, noise floor dropping down is a good indicator yeah, the, that it was probably coming from the that's radio. That's how well tuned his ear is to this yeah. stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that he heard that. Nobody right. had to point it out. Uh, yeah, that was, that was I was going to say that. It did seem to have some influence from the reverb a little bit. Yeah. And well, again, you see how clear when I slowed it down, which now we do in real time. Go ahead, Chris. I'm sorry. Well, I was going to say to add to the EVP thing for everybody watching, we say this because all of us are focused on the audio and most everybody in this group are focused on the communication. We don't look for, we don't, if we catch a photo like Ron did, woohoo, it's the golden goose. But for the most part, we work mostly off of audio. Audra and I work off of audio. Tony and Cherie have done EVP. I mean, EVPI is based off of entity voices, right? But and you'll EVP, notice yeah. the difference. The longer that you investigate and the more review, the EVPs seem to be above or below any ambient noise that you hear in a recording. And that's how you almost know that you got one, especially when it's a class A. It's, it sounds like it's above that ambient noise or it's below it, but it's never right mixed in the middle of it. Right. Correct. Yeah, I think that's that's characteristic of resonance. Yeah. yeah. Where it comes in is 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 you know how it comes through. But yeah, it did it did have similar characteristics to the EVP, but I did I agree with Tony too, the noise board does bottom out briefly uh, beforehand. It it did, which which makes me think it did come through the radio, but Lourdes was absolutely correct. It has got had you just heard that, just if somebody just played the, uh, an audio file only, um, most people would probably say, well, outside of the static noise, they might say it's a spirit box, you know, or something along that lines. But it has absolute EVP characteristics. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Real quick before we go to the next one. I got a bone to pick with Everett. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, he just got here. Totally forgot about the show tonight. <laughs> he had to put that totally in there. <laughs> what the hell, Everett? <laughs> Won't be stay haunted tonight. It'll be stay away. <laughs> <laughs> we forgive you, Everett. We forgive yeah, we forgive you. <laughs> he's writing jokes for the show every week. He can cut he them. Does. <laughs> he does. He deserves a little bit, Kate. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the next one we got is just Staticom Finn. So this one is really oh. fun. Um, I'm going to try to set this up as best I can quickly because we we have clips to show, but the, the reveal for this is really funny. So this was recorded around about the same time as the one you just watched. This is an early clip. Um, a couple weeks ago, we watched Tony on a podcast, and then we, we watched him on our TV using YouTube. And then, then our YouTube channel came up when it was over. I was like, wow, look at some of the old stuff. And we should watch some of these old clips. Maybe we hear something new or whatever, or just let's just, you know. Just to watch it. Just to watch them. So yeah. we start watching one, and it's five minutes long. She knows I want to finish it. She hears something about a minute and eight seconds into it, and she doesn't say anything. She goes, she's going to tell me, just let it finish first. And I would have. And we did. <laughs> then she goes, go back to the beginning and play it again around a minute. And I did. 
and we thought we heard something and we looked at each other and she was what'd you hear and i went <laughs> what'd you hear <laughs> and we heard the same thing um so <laughs> i was like let me just put it in the computer and just listen to it again with a better speaker just to be shocked. sure and so it turned out that a voice says staticom hmm. and what why that's what i was getting to yeah why was this important so so we call up Tony and Cherie. I said, I said, listen, I just sent you a clip. I want you to listen to it and then um, then give me a call. So he calls me and they listened to it and they heard Staticom. Before they called us, which probably explains there was a little delay, they were going back and forth trying to figure out why. I mean, they could hear it. It's clear, but it didn't sound as good as Staticom sounds. We've got better ones, they thought. Right? <laughs> exactly. I mean, it's the little yeah, it's like, that really wasn't that. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Cherie's like, that, that one, I heard it. I heard exactly what it said, but she's like, we've got better ones than that. <laughs> right. She's right. So I said, well, that wasn't 2.0. And Tony goes, oh, so that was 1.0. I said, yeah, that was recorded January. And he goes, oh, all right. So, like, so within a few weeks, you know, in the last month or so, I went, well, no, not this year. And he goes, wait, what? I said, "This not from this year. He goes, when did you record that? So that was January 25th, 2020. It was over four years ago. It wasn't even Static Comp 1.0. No, it was this is before. This there, is there, before was, the there was yeah. no Static Comp at all. At all. Right. Right. So this was three and a half years before we took on the name Static Comp, which came to us through Tony and Sheree. And Tony had been given from a, an audio person he knows who came up with the name. He had given him carte blanche to run with it. He had his blessing to do it. Right. So we eventually took the name on when we removed the radio for the white noise source. But three and a half years before, we, we didn't even know the Rathmans or them know us. We knew of each other. Yeah. Right. We hadn't worked together. There was no static hum. There was the no voice said with it. with you guys. There no. was no, no, we weren't on the podcast yet. Nothing. It was just doing direct radio voice. So in this whole idea of universal phenomenal conscious of which we're all part of, we think that something, somebody recognized what we were doing with white noise experimentation for vocals because the gentleman who was kind enough to give Tony carte blanche to use the name had coined it himself 10 to 12 years ago. Right. Because he was also uh, doing white noise communication. Right. With white noise. Was experimenting with white noise and getting vocals as well. So yeah. We think him doing it and calling it Staticom. And then when we started doing it. Using white noise, they yeah. identified it as that term. That's, that's right. That's, you know, that's the most parsimonious yep. story we can come up with to explain it um that that would make any fits. sense yeah, it yeah. Fits. I mean, it fits. all right let's take a listen it's kind of clear one more time. Yeah, I'm like, wait, wait. <laughs> oh, wow. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> Over four years ago. Yeah. Over four years ago. And then you think about it. What made Ron, because it, it was the first one you picked. Ron, out of all the videos, I think it was maybe, out it of was. all the videos, he picked that one for some whatever reason. Yep. And Staticom was in there. Yeah. <laughs> we were flipping out. We were like, send it to them, and but let's not tell them what it it's from. Let's, let's sprinkle the information to we the We knew rest they were going to be confused. I wanted, I wanted Tony to be like, wait, what? <laughs> we, we were too. We're like, we got better static comms than that. <laughs> but we didn't know. We thought it was something he had just recorded. Here's the best part about that is it sounds like a taxi driver from New York. Staticom. Yeah, it does. I yeah. said the same thing. I said, and it has an accent. <laughs> an accent. Yeah. The Yay. big C. Hey, uh -huh. Yeah. And I saw Roger's thing. We try not to lean into the idea of the prophecy and fortune telling, future telling um there he is Wes Coleman we are going to see you very soon awesome dude right there if you don't know Wes Coleman follow him if you do know him you're already following him <laughs> <laughs> he's a really good dude he is good investigator funny as hell um so yeah that was 
stunning. I mean, I had to listen to it like a hundred times before I would even send it to Tony and Sharia. I went, I want to make sure I'm hearing it. And I kept hearing Staticom. I went, it's, it's saying static. Yeah, we, we, we heard it right away. I mean, it, 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 that word just jumps out at you. But the, the most fascinating thing about that is, you know how we always are going through Staticom listening and you're like, oh, there's so much more there. You know, we, we annotate some of it, but there's always other things that are there that we don't necessarily say what we're, we're hearing, but yeah. it tells you that there's probably in every recording a lot more than we know is mm -hmm. there. Yeah. 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 It was, it was mind blowing when we heard it. We were, we were super excited to send it to them and have them hear it and then call us. <laughs> so we think because of the term and the method was introduced into consciousness, you know, collectively 10, 12 years ago that, that it was recognized mm -hmm. and then, and then labeled or called out and it meant nothing to us at the time. So we didn't even hear it. We didn't recognize it. Yep. Right. 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 And that makes perfect sense because the method you were doing was what the gentleman who termed the term and gave it to right. us was doing. So okay. they, well, oh, they're, they're using white no static on. Yeah. We didn't even know. We didn't know that term. Well, it's not yeah. a common word that you hear in a Webster dictionary, too. So if you guys are listening right. to it before you guys have come up with the name and put it out, you're not going to notice it because it's not. Yeah. Right. And obviously, it was harder to pick out words back then than it is now. That's true. Too. So we would still miss things even when we reviewed sometimes, or if it wasn't clear enough, we didn't know what the word was. We would, you know, not annotate it. But it is amazing how it just came through and we knew of each other, but we weren't friends yet. You know, right. it wasn't, we weren't on the show yet. It's crazy how that happened. That's insane. That's insane. Yeah. Yeah. And then we wound up taking the name Static Come. Crazy. <laughs> it is. It really is. <sighs> well, I like that one for the show because it was both old and it had a tie to contemporary work. But paranormal isn't real, you know. No, I know. Is it, <laughs> I'm aware. Is it crazy or is it a universal consciousness? <laughs> that may be it. I think it's a universal <laughs> consciousness. I do. I think crazy. It, it was conceived and coined. Yeah. And then and when that's we, why we checked. Right. That's why we checked. Had had he come back and said, well, you know, came up with that name two years ago, that would have blown a hole in a lot of our philosophy and theory, right. but it didn't. It nope. held like cement. To yeah, it, it was so great. Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. All right. The next piece we got is Herb. Are you there? <laughs> but this is um, this is funny. This was a residential one, which we had gotten carte blanche to show a whole bunch of stuff publicly because they were more than open about it. Rich Michella from the the Spirit Artist or was New Jersey Paranormal Project um, invited us to come to. There's a lot of static in there. <laughs> yes. Yes, there is. <laughs> I am the white part of white noise. <laughs> and I'm the noise. <laughs> yeah. Like, that was my rap name in the 80s. White noise, yo. <laughs> I love when I get stupid, Tony laughs. I don't know. That was funny. And I can use that too with Cherie and I. Yeah. You could. <laughs> I'm white and I'm noise. You Same thing with yeah. them. He's white and she's noise. Yeah. <laughs> Right. It's reversed over here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so so here's Herb. Here we go. Herb, it's Renee. Are you there? <laughs> That is clear as hell. Yeah, absolutely, that's clear. Yeah. I think that was early when we first started using the software because we yeah. used it for a while with, when, when Keith Clark introduced us to it, and then we got away from it, and then we we knew there was promise in it, and then we went back to it. Right, because when we got away from it, what, what we started doing was um, we went heterodyning. Remember, right. we started doing that and tried different frequencies and stuff like that. Yeah, but then we went back to everything. The, yep. Yeah, we went back to the. 
to this. And for anybody watching that has never done a private investigation for a homeowner, you think they were creeped out by the activity they had before you came in and did the investigation. You should see the look on their face (laughs) when you give them what you've captured. Now imagine that live. Yeah. (laughs) They heard a lot of things live in the moment too. Yeah. Like the guy was asking specific questions that his father would have, would have answered a certain way. He goes, dad, what did you think of home Depot lumber? And the voice goes, it's shit. Yeah, <laughs> and, and that's what his father used to say. Yeah, we yep. all heard it, and then he said, "Yep, that's exactly what he used to say." Wow. Shit, <laughs> because they were more into um, they wanted to solve it to reach loved ones, so they weren't really necessarily like they wanted yeah. to okay, reach so loved ones. They yeah. wanted to contact. Gotcha. That's cool. Right. So they got it wasn't looking. a help thing. Yeah, it wasn't a help thing. It was, yeah. a, you know, more. They were a, having activity, but they believed it was their loved ones, so that's why they brought it. And right. Richard, Richard told them what we did, and they said, "Well, if you want to try to get." vocal contact or communication to see if there's a little more clarification behind what you're hearing and experiencing. Let me bring these two chuckleheads in with their laptop and their boom box. And they got a lot of stuff from their love. Yeah. Truth, yeah. real time communication. Yeah. yeah. There was a lot of good stuff from cool. that one. That was one of them. Yeah. That was also the same one. Rich Michelle's mother, uh, grandmother came through. Yeah. It's in some of the uh, sizzle reels for the documentary stuff too. I think Richard, I love you. Feel it. That came from that same day. And it's, it, that was life changing for him because he, every time he says the story, you can hear it in his voice. Like you can hear it. He yeah. still gets choked up and his eyes get teary. Yeah. It was life changing for him. <laughs> yeah. All right. The next clip, not by horse. Mm-hmm. So this is cool. Um, and I'll tell you why. Because this is back again in that very hazy area of apps. If I'm not mistaken, was this Echo Vox? Yes, it was. No, yes, yes, it was Echo Vox. For sure, it was Echo Vox. And I asked at this is at the um, Beekman Arms. Beekman Arms in Rhinebeck, New York, which is supposedly uh, one of the George Washington has been here places. There's a lot of them around here. I don't know if they're all. But that place board, is active. This one for sure. Yeah, active place. Yeah. And this one specifically, I asked, how did they travel? I named three options. I did multiple choice. Um, retrospectively, now, if I was going to ask something like that, I would not have named anything specifically just for the chance that an app would be able to give me something back. But I thought this was cool because it does exhibit timing and relevance as far as answering goes. It didn't repeat what I said. It included what I said. Yeah, and this is this is not an AI um, enhanced, certainly not at that time application. I don't know if Echo Box even has it now. I don't think so. But so yeah, but this was this came through on an app, which was interesting. All right, here we go. How how do you travel by horse, by car, by boat? Not by horse. Not by horse. Not by horse. Not by horse. But you know, I think it says truck. Yes. I I heard truck. Yeah. I've been telling him that for years, actually. She did. <laughs> that video was already done if by then. He already did it. So yeah. you do, but it says truck. And then yeah. it was uh, clearly truck. Yes. Well, yes. then it wasn't George Washington. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, probably not. It was not. the Amazon truck dude. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> UPS. Yeah. <laughs> what can Brown do for you? <laughs> <laughs> that was during the, the, the portal revolution when all the portal boxes and stuff came out yeah and i did have i did have one or two conversations at, at the time with steve huff I, which i i gracefully thanked at the end of that um you know it's a little bit a little bit disparaging to see where he's gone with his itc stuff now with the second somebody dies he's talking to them I his original important. stuff though did work mm-hmm. his original yeah. portal did work yeah so yeah so i mean that's and I've written about him in, in one of the books, I think, also, too. You know, he did have an influence in the field for a time with that. Uh, when I did interact with him, he was welcoming. He did, you know, respond. He was responsive. 
you know, again, I'm not, I think I depart with where he's gone with it now. I mean, Kobe Bryant was dead more than a few hours and he's got a session up talking to Kobe Bryant. It's like, it's not tasteful. It's so disrespectful. And it's not research. If you need to post it for clicks and likes on a channel, you're getting followers on. Cause that's right. not for followers. Mm, that's so disrespectful. If you think there's an opportunistic window within which you can do good research, then by all means do the session. I'm not discouraging that. I don't reject that concept. But I don't think that research is is the, is the primary force behind what he's doing when it's in that window of time and it's public content for followers right after somebody passes. I don't think that's cool. Yeah. Right. Because you, you, there's no respect for the living relatives that are still grieving. It's right. Just, it's it's right. horrible. Horrible. So, but I try to be fair. I, I, I speak only to my experience. Again, he was very kind when I spoke to him. Little interaction was cool, <clears throat> but then from there, like I said, I just don't. I don't like the direction. I guess that it's gone. Yeah, see, it's un it's unfortunate. I, his uh, his telos is a little bit. You know, his aim, where, where he's going with this, is, I think, is a little bit off. Hey, Michelle. Michelle LeBaron. She's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she is. <laughs> <sighs> what else, Christoph Allgaard? Christoph Allgaard. I, I just, I, you know, you know, we come from the metaphysical side of things, and I have a strong faith, really, really re belief. There's my one time I stumbled. <laughs> I have a, strong, I have a very strong faith belief, and the problem is, is we don't understand the ramifications of what happens too soon. That's all I'm going to say about that. Too soon. Right. Yeah. yeah. The yeah. the ceremony hasn't been done. They haven't been laid in the ground. They haven't been put to rest yet. Too soon. You don't know what you're doing from a metaphysical standpoint. You don't from a faith standpoint. You don't know what kind of damage or good that you're doing with that. Right. Time. Give time. All right. No, that's all I gotta say about that. Because anymore I'll get in trouble. Start getting kicked. <laughs> <laughs> next, the next one is the ties Staticom V2. Oh, I like this. So this is cool. This is this is a 1.0 version of Staticom. Um, it's V2 because I think I did a second edit on the on the book. So this was a. Um, you want to tell the story? This is a restaurant yeah, yeah. that my dad's band was playing gigs at within the last couple of years. Thirty minutes or so from here, and we were there watching them jam. She felt something in the atmosphere, something, something going on with this place. Talked to a couple of the waitresses. Sure enough, yes, things happen at night when they're cleaning up. People won't go upstairs. I went to the bathroom. And so when you go to the bathroom, there's a, a banquet room. Yeah. Big so room. when I went to the bathroom, something drew me to that room and I looked and I was like, something happened here. So anyway, I went to the bathroom, come back. I asked the girl, apparently some guy got shot there. I, I guess he died. I don't even remember. She said he died, but he got shot in the bank room. So okay, fine. So then, go ahead, continue. <laughs> no, that I mean, was. You're more than welcome to run with it. So, so that was it. And then, go ahead. So continue. we talked to the waitress, and we we talked to the owner, and we got it because my father was playing for them, and we got to go in and investigate because two of the ladies from the Paranormal Peaches, um, Lauren and Jocelyn, um, Jocelyn lives very close to the place. We're going in, and they asked us to come in and do static comp. So we did, and the owner at the time, I think she's not the owner anymore, asked if whoever was coming through, if they were from the area, or somebody else asked no, that. No, no, one, yeah, of, the one of the other ladies asked. asked if they were, you know, who's coming through, did you, you live near here? And the owner says, well, if they did, it would have been Siniac, which is like a subsidy of, of Little, Falls. Little Falls, which we had never, I've been in New Jersey most of my life, never. I've never heard of Siniac. I couldn't spell it if I hadn't seen it on a map. Wow. Yeah. But it was loud and freaking clear. And they flipped out. And then and that's why in the video you see I put the map up because it's exactly what they said twice. Yep. Somebody says voice asking that we're asking about it. And then another voice just screams it. So when she finishes, she finishes saying Signac, it it, it it it's almost like on top of it. Cause as soon as she says yeah. Signac, they're in the middle of a sentence and end it. They end it with Signac. It's like right. It's right, yeah, yeah, almost on top of it. Almost, yeah. All right, here we go. Yeah. 
So the two ladies on top were the ones that yeah, we investigated. Joshie and Lauren. Because when we were talking to the investigator, I mean to the investigator, to the owner, and we were speaking and talking about maybe doing an investigation, she mentions, oh, we have someone that's going to come investigate. And we're like, oh, okay. And then she gives us the name. We're like, we know them. Yeah. <laughs> so then we just jo we joined them in the investigation. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, that Cineac was one of the clearest things we've gotten. That was awesome, man. Yeah, very good. Yeah, timing and relevance and intelligence. They knew they knew it when you guys didn't even know the name. Right. That's what I was going to say. A unique name like that that you guys weren't even aware of. That's right. heard of. And it was so clear both times. And then the second part, we were upstairs late that night. Yeah. And a chair moved. And we were trying to figure out, you know, if it, it was paranormal or not. It was, you know, investigating it. And that's why she asks the question. And then yeah. we got chair and to get your attention so the storage room upstairs we, yeah. we check for animals breezes <laughs> anything that could have vibration something that could have moved the chair okay, could it move pretty abruptly yeah loud but very succinct very quick and then it was done so we were asking and that was that's awesome attention. and of course because she hears things super fast yeah and i was shocked i said to get your attention because <laughs> that was, it was shocking yeah but, that's awesome yeah we have two more clips. One of them you have already seen. This one is your knocking. Oh, I like that one. This one's cool. This was at a library um, in New Jersey. Rich Michella and Kim Geyer, the ghost history medium, had us uh, do a lecture. We've done a lot of events like that with them at libraries. This was one of them. A lot of times when Richard joins us, he'll knock on whatever's near him, and he'll ask for someone to come through and tell him what he's doing, just to try to see if he can establish possibly visual and audible communication or awareness. And uh, this time you'll see that he not only does, but I think what Tony always describes about the characteristics of what you can tell from the voice is also um, highlighted in this, I think. Okay. Here we go. going to do something you tell me what I'm doing who heard that Very clear. Child's voice, too. Yeah. It's it's creepy. Right. Yeah. So clear. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Warbled its way into existence. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing how that happens. Yeah. 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 Consistently. <laughs> yeah. Consistent. Everybody hears the same thing, too. So that warble is pretty, it's a pretty clear warble. Yeah. 
you know. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. Shameless plugs. <laughs> we have reached shameless plugs. Oh, there's no more clips. I thought you said there was one more. Okay, good. But I think he saved one more. I'm saving it. <laughs> oh. Shameless okay. plugs. What shameless do we have plugs. Going on? Huh. Oh, that's right. We're the guests tonight. I know. I'm trying. Well, we'll be appearing on Entity Voices Monday nights. <laughs> <laughs> you can find us on YouTube. You can find us on Facebook on the UNX Network. I'm just kidding. Well, we have a podcast on Thursday into the Fray yes, podcast on, yep. with the Static Com team. On UNX. Yep. On UNX. We are doing Into the Fray with Shannon Lugro Thursday night. And we have another one on Sunday, the Sha Wooten podcast, right, Tony? Right. Yeah. Yep. On Sunday, we have a few. Of them I know, out. and then we have Morris. Yeah, Cal- I think we need to. I think we need to send some clips for that one. I think that one's audio only. So, okay. oh, the Sunday one. Okay, correct. All right, I'm going to send some clips. If you have any you want me to include, I'm going to send some clips to Shannon Legro for Thursday night's Into the Fray show tonight or tomorrow. I won't get to it tonight. Um, I mean, I have some that I've sent to other shows we've done, but if you want me to wait until you can go through just nah. to check. No, if you have ones that we've shown recently, just use those. Okay. And then on April 13th, we have a public event at the Morris County Friedenheisen. Arboretum. Yep. We have that. It's a public event. If you go on the Facebook pages, our personal pages, you'll find it if you want to purchase tickets. What else do we have, honey? We don't uh, don't have the parasols on the 15th. That's right. The 15th. April 15th? Mm hmm. Is that what new? <laughs> For oh, some reason, we have An- back- Anthony's. We have back surgery. Anthony Simonelli <laughs> put back surgery on the on the April 15th. So, all right. That's not what I was referring to, but um, I hope not. some information may be provided. April 15th is tax day. That's the best time to take it in the back. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> What's the 15th? Yeah, time? we don't actually have it on the calendar yet. Well, you, you may not because it's not an event. It's just uh, some possible information being provided. Hmm. Okay. Um, I will remain lost. <laughs> remain lost. Okay. Symposium. Oh, that's right. Okay. So we, we will it. have, we should know by then, right? We have submitted an abstract for. Paranormal Symposium that's going to be held in Gettysburg in the summer um, on ITC and Analytic Idealism. And we're hoping that we will be, the four of us, uh, for Staticon Project presenting and doing a lecture presentation there. And if not, we wish them well. I think it's an awesome idea that they're launching this kind of a thing. Right. But we do hope to be there for that. Um, and they're yeah. announcing on April 15th who's going to be out of the submission. Correct. And what, what is the date of the supposed symposium? It is August. not in July. August, I thought. August? Yes. Yeah, I think it's August, yeah. August. August. They were August. supposed to be in Gettysburg maybe two weeks if they were going, though. No. Uh, that's, that's what we're waiting to find I know. Out. I remember you talking about that, yeah. 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 I mean, you can do the... the that's why Gettysburg. Our cons, because it's a lot of... What are the challenging? <laughs> yeah. Like, maybe just mention the... Oh yeah, and then we don't get Paracon <laughs> heavy as much until they're a month apart, though, right? A week or two. Two weeks. Two weeks. Yeah. yeah, two we weeks apart. Maybe meet them up there at the symposium if they all go. <laughs> so we're gonna take off a week, and then take off a week, a long weekend, and then take off another long weekend. Yes, <laughs> we're do- we're doing that all year long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have six weeks of vacation time I got to use. I don't. <laughs> I'll give you some of mine. Okay. Yeah, we should work that way. Yeah, we should work. I that wish way. it did too. And then Wes Coleman, who's watching or was watching before, um, he's going to be escorting around two of the ladies from the Festival of the Unexplained, um, who are going to be here doing uh, the Shanley on Wednesday in May, and then Fort Mifflin on Thursday. So we're doing those two nights with them. Tony, we're doing like a four-mansion tour. Yeah, May. we're crazy. Shanley on a Wednesday, Fort Mifflin on a Thursday, Mars right. Park, another event with Rich Michelle on Friday, and then uh, we're doing Booby's Brewery in Shotnick. Yeah. 
in Pennsylvania on Saturday. We're doing four. four <laughs> you know, if you're doing that, you got to do five. The four <laughs> mansion tour has been done. You got to go. Up your game. <laughs> up your game. The next day is, is it, no, it's Mother's Day. The next day is Mother's Day, right. <laughs> it's the 8th through the 11th, four nights in a row. And then the following weekend is Paracon uh, at Penhurst. And then the week after that is the 25th and 26th. We're doing the trifecta event with Get Haunted and Ronnie LeBlanc from Expedition Bigfoot. That's at the Shanley. And we're doing a Cryptids one June 1st. And we're doing another one June 8th. That four uh, event thing, I think, you know, like when you want to get a child tired so they can go to sleep. I guess since it's Mother's Day, the next day he wanted to tire me out so we don't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> God. Yeah, we still old school investigate. I mean, I could go somewhere and just do Staticom all night because to me, there's nothing like hearing vocal responses in real time. But we still use digital recorders. We we'll still, still do the, yeah. the EVP bursts. We do that. Yeah. And we turn on um, some um, ghost boxes at times. We yeah. do do that. You know, people still want to do them when we go out. Yeah. So. so. All right. There's one more thing I want to play. Not play with. I but I want to play this one more time. Hang on. Go home. Go home. It sounds like go, go home. Yeah. <laughs> home penis. <laughs> was there somebody on the group that was just being a real jerk? Go home penis. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. I mean it, it, it could have been uh could have been a pronoun. Yeah. It was active though that night. There was a lot of disembodied voices we were hearing that time. <laughs> a lot. But, yep, we got that word. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, it was quite funny. It's just awesome. I agree. It was our Beavis and Butthead moment. Yes. Yeah. That was funny. All right. We know what Tony's got going on. Globe Paracon, if you guys weren't paying attention to the commercials. That's right. Come on. Yeah. yeah. Get out there. April 13th. Tombstone the week after that, correct? Two weeks, right? Two weeks after, yeah. Two weeks after that. Tombstone. Which good because it gives me two weekends in the month to finish this move. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I'm bitter. <laughs> yeah. That's hard. It's hard, man. It's a lot of work. Yeah. The moving is well, considering I had to drive all the way over here because my computer's here. Cherie's at the other house, so I get to get done here and then drive home. <laughs> well, I guess I got two homes right now. But... Are you in the new house? The yeah. old one. Oh, the new one. Okay. Yeah. No, I'm He's currently one. in the new one. Cherie's at the old one. Okay. Yeah. So a week from this coming Saturday, Todd and Carmela and Raul will be here for their investigation with the Montgomery House. That's Yay. cool. Yeah. I'm excited to hear what they think. Yeah. yeah. I can't imagine they won't absolutely love the place. Yeah, I agree. As long as Mrs. Montgomery's nice to him. <laughs> well, if she's not, they'll still hear it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She makes sure. Oh, yeah. She'll right. flash Raul over the head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Raul break the Raul's. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Appreciate you coming out, seeing us again. We appreciate our guests, Ron and Lourdes, tonight oh, for coming on with us. Let them know who next week's guest is. <laughs> yeah, whoever's going to be appearing who next week. Oh, God, I know. It's Chris and Audra. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yay! We will be telling you how full of shit we are next week. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. We all get a chance. Yep. Yeah. We all uh, get a chance. We'll explain how I dragged Audra into the paranormal world, and uh, and we'll okay. we'll start adding up. We'll add to that twenty years of experience that you experienced tonight. How you doing? How you doing? Hey. How you doing, Grandpa? 
Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations to Anthony yeah, Simonelli. Yeah, so awesome. Going to be yeah. a grandpapa. Going to yeah. have a grandson coming on its way. So that's yeah. fantastic. Congratulations. Yeah, it was very cool. He was already trying to marry his grandson with my granddaughter. <laughs> <laughs> trying to get her to go after the younger kids. Huh? <laughs> Talk about robbing the cradle. <laughs> All right, guys, thanks for coming out. We will see you same time, same channels, same people. Maybe Sheree will be back next week. Hopefully. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Not the same. I know. Not the same. We always I miss agree. it. Just not the same show without the little Asian lady yelling at us. <laughs> oh, really? Shut up. Well, I get to go back home and have that happen. So it's <laughs> 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 <Give me> a break. <laughs> All right, guys, we appreciate you coming out. We will definitely see you guys next week. And remember, if you want to go looking for penis after you're <laughs> dead and gone, you, you got to go ghost hunting with Ron and Lourdes. But most of all, you got to stay haunted. All right, we'll see you guys next week. Good night. Penis. <laughs>